I'd like to give all glory, praise, and honor onto the Most High. And we're going to get into it, man. And um, we're going to be looking at uh, Farrakhan today, you know. And, you know, I used to listen to Farrakhan, you know, before I woke up and I realized a lot of these guys, you know, they you know, they are masons, they are fraud, you know what I mean? They, um, they speak smooth words, a lot of smooth words, but in them lies deceit. But, you know... I've heard Farrakhan call himself the Messiah, you know, before, you know, and that rubbed me the wrong way, you know, and um, I had to think to myself, you know, what would make a person, uh, you know, have that much pride to even come out and say something like that, you know, you know, and this, this is a, this is a prideful man, you know, and um, we're going to take a look at this video real quick and we're going to get into it, man. And the Jewish rabbis gave me this. And believe me, I, people give me stuff. But I was so dumb, I, I, I didn't know what this is, you know. But I went home and I read the words yes, sir. to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You are the Messiah of the world. Look at this, look at this. And you are the Messiah to every human who wants to be civilized. So you see, he said he received, you know, that gift from one of the Jewish people, you know, and um, I mean, my whole thing was like, you know, even if you did get it as a gift and it and it had those things engraved on it, you know, why would you come out and read that to your congregation? You know what I mean? Like you really, <laughs> you really had that much pride and you felt comfortable doing that or reading that, you know, you see how he had that. That smile on his face, you know, he was prideful when he read when he read that, man. You know I mean, you're not the Messiah, man. And he's came out and said that before, you know, that he's the Messiah. You know, it's a prideful man. You know, the scripture says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, man. I you mean, you know, nothing is. You know I mean. You only got a few people showing reverence to you, you know. Every everything bow down when the when, the, when, when, when you know when the Most High, you know, makes his return. Animals, you know what I mean, you know, the, the the elements of the earth is gonna be showing reverence to him, you know. I mean, this is just prideful, man. Like, you know, he was happy. I mean, he that that made his day when he read that. Like it was, I'm just saying, like you know, there's no, there's no need for you to come out and read that to your congregation. You know, to, to prove what. You know, that they said it. You know, and and and, and, and because we know that they're from, they're, they're they're not those people, man. They're from the children of Japhet. You know. You know. So he's prideful about a people that's not even. You know, the people of the book telling him that he's the Messiah. <laughs> you know, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dig deep more into this Farrakhan character, man, because you know, the more you the more you research, the more you see that luck, man. It's the reason these guys are set up. And they keep him there, man. I mean because you see everybody else is getting all these other leaders got shot and killed. But, you know, for some reason, he managed to stay there for all these years, talking as bold as he did, you know, and nothing happens to him, man. So right here, it's, right here, it says, um, it's a little, you know, biography on Farrakhan. And right here, it says, Farrakhan says he never knew his biological father. In a 1996 interview with Henry Louis Gates, he speculated that his father, Gene, may have been Jewish. I mean, that shocked the crap out of me, you know I mean? Because I would have never thought that, uh, 
you know, his father would have, you mean, would be a Jewish man. You know, what I mean? of course, we know he has, um, you know, Caribbean roots from from his mother's side. But I you know, mean, for him to admit that, you know, that that's big. You know, so this, you know I mean, so and we know that everything is after the seed of the father. You know? It's after the seed of the father. That's what determines your li your lineage. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's whoever your father is and. You know, this guy's been in disguise the whole time, man. You know, you know what trips me out a lot about, um, you know, a lot of the people in, you know, they read the Quran, they read, or, or um, they they follow Islam and things like that. You know, they say that the Bible is a, they like to say the Bible is a white man's book. I mean, that was given to you by your oppressors, this and the third. But you know, the the, the scriptures des describes. You know, it, it describes Christ as um, you know, a, a man of color, man. You know I mean, I mean, feet of like burnt brass, man. Willie here, you know. What I mean? But but when you look at Muhammad, I mean, Muhammad was they they, they describe him as as um, you know, a white man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we go we go take a look at that. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's crazy when they you know like how you know they bash the Bible. You know, but the person that they they follow, you know I mean that, that they they have it, they hold this high esteem. You know, was you know more than likely a Caucasian man, man. The Queen of England is the forty-sixth granddaughter of the Prophet of Islam. Pop quiz: Who's the whitest prophet in history? You're probably thinking Joseph Smith, founder of Mormonism, right? What if I told you there's a prophet out there who's so white, he makes Joseph Smith look like Malcolm X? What if I also told you that this pale, pasty white prophet had black slaves and referred to Ethiopians as raisin heads? Would you call him a racist? Or would you give him yet another free pass because our expectations automatically drop to the floor whenever we discuss the prophet of Islam? Many people who haven't read the Muslim sources assume that Muhammad was dark-skinned, but Arabs are classified as Caucasians, and they can exhibit a variety of shades and tones. So if we want to know what Muhammad looked like, we'll have to go through some of the descriptions of his appearance found in the Hadith. Now, if Muhammad were sitting in a crowd of his fellow Arabs, how would we spot him? Sahih al-Bukhari, number 63. Narrated Anas bin Malik, while we were sitting with the Prophet in the mosque, a man came riding on a camel. He made his camel kneel down in the mosque, tied its foreleg, and then said, who amongst you is Muhammad? At that time, the prophet was sitting amongst us, leaning on his arm. We replied, this white man reclining on his arm. It was narrated that Abu Jahaifa said, I saw the messenger of Allah with a white complexion and some white hairs. Sahih Muslim 6071. It was narrated from al jurairi from Abu at tufail I said to him, did you see the messenger of Allah? He said, yes, he was white with an elegant face. And the Muslim sources go out of their way to remind us how white Muhammad was. They tell us about the whiteness of his shins, and the whiteness of his thigh, and the whiteness of his leg, and the whiteness of his stomach, and the whiteness of his forearms, and the whiteness of his armpits, and the whiteness of his cheeks. You know, so that's how they describe him, and it's coming straight from the source. You know, it's something else that he said. He said, um, you know, sometimes, you know, Arabs can be described as, uh, you know, Caucasian or classified as Caucasian. Let's bring that back real quick so you guys can see. But Arabs are classified as Caucasians and they can exhibit a variety of shades and tones. So you see that, you know, he said Arabs are classified as Caucasian. They can exhibit, um, you know, different shades and tones, you know, but but they're not Caucasians, you know. You know, Arabs are, you know, they're Shemites. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not um, the turn of Jafet. I mean, for example, let's look at this guy. He recently was in the news. Okay, this this was the uh, that that um, that shooter that shot up the supermarket. That recently, the Colorado shooter, I think he was. I mean, now when you look at this guy, you know you he, you would think that yo he's a white guy, but what did they classify him under? They they classified him under. They said he was Syrian. I mean, Syrians, you know, they they're, they're Arabs. They classified under Arabs. You know what I mean? These are Shemitic people, man. You know. These are Shemitic people. 
No, but he, he looks he looks like a Caucasian. If nobody told you what he was, you would be like, hey, you know, that's a Caucasian. You know, that, that, that's a, that's a, he's from Jafet, you know. But, you know, this is the and it, the, And you got to remember, too. Remember, you know, that, you know, the turn of um, Edom, you know, like it says in the book of Jashik, got conquered. By the turn of Kittim, you know, or the, 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 which was the Romans, you know what I mean. So let's take, let's take a look. At, let's take a look at something else. You know what I mean? Because the more you read, you know, the more you figure out, like, yo, a lot of these camps don't they they're lying and they don't know what they're talking about, man. You know, I'm kind of going off topic, but I'll get back onto it. Right here, we go look at this book real quick. You know what I mean, um, it's called the Turn of Genesis. You know, um. That I was reading, and right here it says there's little evidence showing that the prominent biblical characters Moses, David, and Solomon interacted with white nations. You know what I mean? So they didn't interact that much with white nations. They, 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 you know, the, the Israelites only started interacting with you know the turn of Japheth. You mean the Romans and, and the Grecians and Macedonians like later on, like like that's going towards more the New Testament. I mean, so 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 what does that mean? David was known for slaying Edomites, man. I mean, this is David was known for slaying the Edomites. I mean, I mean, and if it's telling you right here that they didn't interact with them, you know, this is this is this is this is only means the white man is not Esau like they like they, a lot of the camps push a lot, you know. Let's keep going. Let's look at something else. Moreover, same book, Third of Genesis. It says, moreover, there was also in Dunderswell pattern of Solomon choosing women from both Hamite and Semite nations should be Shemite. Uh, none of these scriptures regarding Solomon's many women mention any woman from biblical white nations. You mean from Japheth, you see? Solomon's story, like many Old Testament leaders, dealt with an Israelite leader that had continuous interactions with Hamite black nations. So you see, so he said um, they, he wasn't really dealing with any white nations until you know what I mean later on, you know what I mean? They didn't, and I believe in when it, when you read uh, you know the list of women that Solomon was sleeping with, you know what I mean I believe they had Edomite women listed underneath there too. You know what I mean? Hold up, right here, First Kings uh, eleven. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna just read a little bit. It says, but but King Solomon loved many. Strange woman, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, woman of Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, I mean, Sidonians, Hittites, I mean, so Edomites was listed underneath there. But like, like you were saying, they didn't have any interactions with white nations, you know what I mean? Okay, let's look at somebody like Steve Jobs. One of the founders of the most famous face of Apple, Steve Jobs' birth father, was a Syrian immigrant, man. So when you look, when you look at him, you say like, "Oh yeah," I mean, he's an Edomite. But after his father's seed, the seed of his father, I mean, everything is after the seed of the father. He's a Shemite. You mean? But what would made him? What 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 would make him look like this? Remember, I always tell you, the book of Jasher. Remember, the the Edomites got conquered. By, you know, the turn of Kittim, you know, and more than likely, you know what I mean it was, you know, they became one government. It was probably mixing going on, you know, and this, that, and the third, you know, you know. But like he said, you know, they they come in different shades. Mm -hmm. But the turn of Japheth, you know, what what a lot of people be doing, they they mixing the turn of Japheth up. With the turn of Shem, you know. You know, Esau is is a Esau's from Shem. Esau's not from Japheth, you know. So let, let's look at the one more. I mean, so the former singer, uh, this is Paula Abdul, American Idol judge. She has Syrian roots through through her father. Look at her. I you mean, know, she has a little bit more pigmentation. You know, and she looks a little bit more ethnic. You know what I mean? 
So it says, oh yeah, her father is uh, at, the, at the bottom there, Sy Syrian Jewish. You know, so you know you gotta watch out, man. You know they come in all different, sh all different, sh different sh shades. You know. You know, okay, but she's, you know, she's a Shemite according to the um, seed of her father. So you see, you know, and I kind of went on that tangent because after I brought up, you know, you know, Farrakhan being Jewish, you know, so his father being Jewish. So what, what would Farrakhan be under? You know I mean his um, he would be classified, you know, as a he he would be a, a, a child of Jafet. You know I mean. But because of his mother being having those Caribbean roots, you know, he looks like, you know, he looks like a brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, this is crazy, man. But my bad. I went off. I went off on a tangent, man. You know, I was really supposed to just, you know, harp on him a little bit more. I mean, but um, Isaiah 2, 11, the lofty looks of man shall be humble and the holiness of men shall be bowed down. Uh, only the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. That's right, man. So the most I go, he's going to humble, you know, all that's all puffed up, man. You know, because, you know, this guy right here, man, like I said, it was, there's no, there's no reason for him to read that out loud in front of his congregation, man. He should have kept that and put it in his, in, in, in his, uh, trophy collection or something, you know. But the fact that he brung that, you know, to his congregation to read it. You know, and then you got then you actually got people clapping, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, that's blasphemy, man. Straight blasphemy. You know what I mean? The scripture says the most high's coming back for war. You know I mean to shed blood. You know, that's what he that's what that's what he's coming back for. I don't know. I don't know. That ain't that ain't what Farrakhan been doing. You know, he got a whole army, and I've yet to see him do anything, man. But yeah, man, I just had to bring that up, and you know, went on a little tangent with the little lesson, you know. But um, yeah, that just rubbed me the wrong way, man. You know, you have to have a lot of pride, you know, to sit on there and proclaim yourself the Messiah. To actually read that, you know. But anyway, man, all praises to the most high, man.